to the shadows guys my name is phantom and today we are jumping back into la noir and continuing the naked city case last time we went to the girl's apartment who i don't think we oh julia randall that's what it is julia randall's apartment um and we finished investigating that which it looks like it was a suicide when actually it seems to be a drugged murder uh because we found a bunch of bowie twits on the floor and a morphine syringe in the trash can on our way out so this episode we're going to be picking up with that case and we are going to be heading to dr sturman's practice first to talk to the doctor who prescribed the bowie twits and then after that we're going to head to the dasani dress store because she was a model so we're going to start with dr sturman's practice and see if he can tell us anything about what she prescribed him or prescribed her all right here we go dr sturman's practice is 2 45 p.m is Dr. Stoneman in today? That's the question. Let's see. Is it down an alleyway? Hmm. Oh, this is it right here. Okay. Sure. We looking for a box to find out which one he's in? Yeah, we are. Right, he's not on the first or second floor. Which means he's on one of these floors. There he is, fifth floor, 505. Here, Stoneman, office 505. Dang, is this how they used to set up practices back in the day with like different buildings that have a bunch of people in one building? Was not expecting that. Boy, have the times changed though, right? Where did you just come from, Earl? Did you just walk out of the bathroom? Every doctor in this town, advice would be able to work half days. But not all doctors are prescribing illegal things, so you can't really them all out there all right so he's 505 oh here it is right here 505 yes sir your name LAPD. phelps we'd like to see dr stoneman dr stoneman is with a patient would you like to wait no we wouldn't tell him we want to see him now there's no need to be rude save it sister dr stoneman i have some gentlemen from the la oh she said that with such regret because they she's all rude Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Sternman. We are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise Dr. Patient Privilege, Detective. Relationship with the victim. Do you know Ms. Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Okay, well, you're already not being honest with us about something because of your eye movements, so can I accuse you? Over there, no. Two suspects, the pills, no. July of 46. I don't think I can accuse you, so we'll just bad cop it. You didn't like her, did you? It wasn't a question of like, detective. She was incredibly beautiful. When you looked in her eyes, you knew how a mouse felt before a snake. Mm. An ounce of warmth there. What would I have accused you of on that? It certainly wasn't good cop. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. She was depressed. I don't know how I would accuse you on that, though. We believe Ms. Randall died of an overdose of morphine. You didn't prescribe her anything else, did you? That is a very serious allegation to level at a doctor, young man. You didn't... <laughs> Troubled sleep and depression. It's nothing personal. I'm I don't understand you. this because she wants to lose weight. Well... I'm just bad cop again. Is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She no, we she didn't get that right either. Her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. Oh, that was right. All right. Mr. Stoneman, we'll be in touch. That didn't tell us anything. There's something more there, but I don't know what. What that would be. Did we get everything here? Okay, we did. I guess we're headed to the dress store now, but something doesn't add up there. What would I have accused him of on the first one? I don't know. Anyway. Alright, back down we go. That was the shortest visit to a doctor's office I think I've ever seen. 
Like for real, anyway. Is Roy gonna talk to us on the elevator ride down? Nope, he ain't gonna say a word. Alright. He only likes to talk about the case when we're in the car, it's weird. The old boy oh, there we go. Well, I figured that. I don't know. He looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange reaction to have to the death of you. Well, I mean, he also didn't be honest with us what they were prescribed for because she's got sleeping pills too. So, something doesn't add up here at all with that doctor. Anyway. Unless she got the sleeping pills as a separate thing? I don't know. Anyway. Alright, let's head to the dress store and see what the modeling company has to tell. Oh wait, it's a clothing boutique. Never mind, it's not a model in place yet. Maybe that's later on. There we go. Mizani dress store at 2.56pm. See what we got going on in here. Well, hello. What can I help you with today? Oh, you're right here. LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. You haven't. We're just making inquiries. Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. She didn't even react. She just kind of like, oh. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Okay. I feel like you're being honest about that, so I'm gonna go with my gut and say you're being honest. That's why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The oh. Wives weren't happy and neither was I. Okay, well that's fair. Do you have any close friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Yes, we would like would to speak like with her. her. I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Well, we'll handle that. These gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. Okay. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life. <laughs> Wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? Phelps, what are you... What are you playing at? That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must Is Henry the Henderson guy? I am so confused. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiance, Henry Arnett. Okay. You seem to be being honest. You're not really moving, you're just blinking. Alright, I'm gonna take your word for that one. Tell us about it. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Okay. Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? Mm. She looks a little unnerved. I can't accuse her, but I could bet. Let's see what accuse says and just see what Julia was kept by this Henderson character. The apartment, the clothes, the jewelry. Was she a call girl? How would I know? What evidence is there that says that Julia is a prostitute? Okay, well, I don't think there's anything we can say on that one. Yeah, I don't think there's anything... No, we can't say anything there. You don't ask, you never find okay. out. Okay, so then... And do we bad cop this, or do we good cop this? Let's bad cop it. Look, lady, you need to give me something. Do you know anybody who would have cause to harm Julia? No. Really, Mr. Phelps. Julia is my friend. I don't know why anyone would want to hurt her. She's okay, isn't she? No. Nope. For now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiance to visit? So was she being honest about she didn't know who Mr. Henderson was? Now wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. 
Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, oh no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. Oh god, that was weird. That was just like very sudden, like... But there wasn't even like a cutscene with that of walking out. It was just boom, you appeared outside. All right. Well, what did we call an R and I for? Phelps, but do we have a message? We have a message. How could I help, detective? Message. Oh, we have a message. Okay. Yes, detective. The coroner has been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call. Oh, the coroner. Does he have more evidence Please. about the body and the autopsy results? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. Sure thing, Matt. We'll be right over. <laughs> why couldn't they? Why couldn't she just pass on that message for me? Why did I have to get on a call for that? That's so weird. All right. Well, let's go to the autopsy first. See what Mal found out. Oh, we can't even go to the Hollywood police station yet. All right. Well, let's go to the autopsy then. All right. Hollywood receiving a hospital 3:08 p.m. There's the room that she's in. What did you find, Mal? You obviously found something more than what we found when we actually like looked. Over here. All right, Mal. Cole, Roy, I have some information for you. The Why is there a second body in this? Mal, get on with it. The bruising confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Oh. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. Who is this? Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two by four. So what? Good riddance. I found two surrettes in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. We're listening, Mal. No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Mal. Maybe an hour or two after the Randall girl. So you're saying Laughing Boy here could be one of our killers? That's I don't know. Shot. Thanks, Mal. We'll check it out. I found something else. What do we got over here? What is this? Sorry, I don't play. I don't know if it's significant. His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Oh. <laughs> Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. Oh, now we go away. We're getting sent. We have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Let me know how you get on. Sure, Mal. And thanks for the lead. Sure, Mal. Thanks for the lead. Oh, why do you have to be rude? Just let him do his job. See, now this is a nice setup here. You have that right next to the police station. We didn't have that in the early game. That's smart. That's very smart. Good for you. Where's interview room two? Interview room one. Oh, it's over here. Okay. Oh, right in front of my face. Interview room two. Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. It's the least I could do. Terrible news about Julia. All right, relationship with victim. How well did you know Julia Randall? Vaguely. I'm in the clothing business, and Julia occasionally modeled for me. Okay. You've got a very sinister, honest look about you. So we're gonna good cop it for now. And you were close. We were friends. No. I'm really bad at telling things, apparently. Because... I thought it was a good cop, and he was, like, totally cool. Miss Randall's landlady said she was seeing an older man. Could have been. I wasn't privy to all the details of Julia's private life. Okay, well that one you're clearly lying, but how do I get you for that? Testifies living in San Francisco. Let's just bad cop it. Spill it, Henry. You know nothing about a man named Henderson? Uh, yes, you're, you're right. Henderson, yeah. Very distinguished. How about a first name, wise guy? An address, maybe? I'm sorry, I don't. I think he lives somewhere out of town, somewhere back east. Man, we are absolutely pooing the bed on this. Jimmy LeBlanc? No. Should I have? 
Is, is he an entertainer or something? Oh, you're lying again. Let's just accuse you and see what happens. I think you're lying. I think Randall was a high-priced hooker, and this Henderson character didn't want it to come out that he had been seeing her. I think he had LeBlanc and an accomplice bump her off. I think you know who Henderson is, and you're trying to conceal his identity. I think you've been out in the sun too long without your hat. Prove that I know who Henderson is. I can't. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing good in this case at all. Um... We'll just go bad cop, I guess. I don't know. I don't... So you wouldn't have any reason to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julie Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But, like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc character. Heather told us that you were in fashion. I am way off the mat of charts with this. That's right. I'm doing, I'm doing awful. Enemy or not, director. Some kind of traveling sale. That's what it looks like. Once I got out of the core, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. <laughs> Fighting sixth. You were in the sixth Marines? Yes. I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. That will be all for now, Henry. You've been very helpful. He seems like he's lying about that. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have him get in touch via KGPL when they have some information. Thank you. I was gonna say, you could tell on that, I could tell on that one he was lying about the Marines. He's in that car at the lights. Let's see what he does. I had a feeling he was lying about, he had a look of... Now would be a bad time to forget how to drive. I am trying to tell this properly. Don't you love it when they pull the war hero excuse? Actually, maybe you don't. Well, the problem is that I didn't pick up on that. I'm so bad at being able to tell lives in this one. I can't tell them sometimes. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Sometimes things don't just, things don't click. Had like Arnett to be a better liar. <laughs> As I get a one out of three, and he's like, oh, I would expect him to be a better liar. The Marine one I picked up on, but obviously, oh my goodness gracious, look out people. Cops crossing the road here. We're on a very important, very important case here. It always amazes me too how the red lights don't come in until I'm the one who's like back here. Where are you going, Arnett? I'm gonna switch lanes. Careful, we'll get spotted at this distance. I'm playing back, calm down. It looks more suspicious leaving this huge gap if I'm being honest. Like, let's be real. Where are you taking us, Henry? God damn it, everyone's looking at us, Cole. He doesn't know yet, we're okay. I have a green light, yet this person's still coming. We're gonna get around you, there we go. I promise I don't drive like this in real life. All right, we got through that one, we're gonna slow down a bit. What are you going, Henry? You very seldom seem, you're driving awful slow too, what are you? That was weird, it's a green light. Mm. Never stepped foot in Okinawa. Well, we know that. His, look, his face expressions did not match what he was saying at all. So now we have to figure out where in the world he's going. He's here. Where is he stopping? Where are you going, Henry? What is this? What is this place that you just entered into? He needs money and fast. Oh, he's in a bank. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him. 
see how he intends to spend the money. With Okinawa. Oh. What are you doing in here? <coughs> That's right, Mexico City. One way ticket, please. Next available seat. That would be one day from now. Is that okay? It's going to have to be. You're running from something. LAPD, the man who just came in here, he bought a ticket? Yes, sir, to Mexico City, tomorrow night. If you hear from him again, don't mention this conversation. What have you got? Mexico City. A ticket from Mexico City? Yep. Tomorrow night. That's good, but this is better. What have we got? Is this... Cigarette case. On broker's face when I told him to hand it over. The guy who owned the joint thought it was worth at least ten large for a cigarette case. Arnett only got six hundred clams. Interesting. So where does that leave us then? Back to the police station. Okay. Well, that is going to do it for today, guys. Next time, we will pick up here and head back to the Highwood Police Station. And we're going to dial in on the phone on the next one as well and figure out what we're calling in for because I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's for the cigarette case we just got. I'm not sure. But Arnett obviously is hiding something. Maybe we'll get to the bottom of it next time. We shall see. But thank you all for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe for more content like this. Until next time, guys, have a great day, and I will see you all in the next episode.